I would like to tell you how I've become a software engineer in test with no experience, no computer science and no coding skills at all. And it took me approximately five months. Previously, I was using a laptop just to buy things and watch movies, just like everyone else. So it is possible even for a farm boy from North Dakota to become an IT professional. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I did it. At the beginning, I had no idea what computer even was, especially with the fact that after the high school, I went to agriculture college for a year. And then I dropped off and went to North Dakota to work on the farm. Because honestly, I don't believe in two college degrees that you have to pay for for the rest of your life. So while I watched movies where the guy would type in some characters on the dark screen of the computer and the cool things would happen. And that's what coding actually is. You talk to the computer through the commands. So computer is just like a dog. Someone had taught it many commands and you have to know those commands in order to interact with the computer. And it actually inspired me because that hacker guy next to the computer would make a lot of money and live a life we all dream about. So I've started researching software engineering. I've googled how to become a software engineer and found an overwhelming amount of information. But a friend of mine, who was an IT guy at that time, actually explained things to me in a very simple way. In order to become a software engineer, you need to learn a lot of programming languages, coding concepts. And he explained to me the difference between software engineer, software engineering test, which is called an ASDET or QA sometimes. But if you want to make a lot of money as, and be a cool IT guy, there is actually an easier way to do so. Let's compare all of them and see what are the differences. Software engineer, sometimes also called a developer, is a person who creates website, mobile apps or other types of apps. Software engineer in test or software development engineer in test, on the other hand, are people who also creating apps or software, but they also write the code to test that software. For example, when we create an application, we need to verify that a user can register, that a user can log in, and a user can use the other functionality of that website or the application. And that's what software engineer in test do. QA automation engineer is almost very similar and sometimes it would be the same person as software developer in test or software engineer in test. But by default, QA automation engineer is a person who writes code to test application and doesn't actually create them as the software engineer does. And we also have a QA engineer. This is usually the person who manually tests the application, doesn't write the code, simply navigates to the website, test if user can register, test if user can log in and use the other functionality of the website. But these names are used interchangeably in the different companies. In some companies, QA engineer will also write the code. But usually, or by default, QA engineer would be a manual tester. So my friend told me that if I would like to become an IT guy or if I would like to find a backdoor to IT, becoming a QA engineer is the easiest way to go. And it only takes approximately five months. Although it took me almost a year to make my mind and to sign up for the bootcamp because I was so scared to come to the bootcamp and to be one of the dumbest people in the class. I thought that everyone will be a programmer and I'll just be a farm boy that everyone laughs about. So I started learning things on my own way before I joined the course by watching YouTube videos, reading articles, asking my friends about it all the time. And when I got to the school, I actually realized that I was the only person who prepared for the course and no one else did. So I felt the relief after so much fear. By the way, if you would like to learn what I've learned on my own, you can see it by watching this video right here. During the course, I've learned basics of the software QA engineering, such as what is it? How do we test applications? How do we prioritize our testing? And etc. The bootcamp also provided Java programming class, which was too difficult for me during that time. After getting upset with the Java class, I realized that 
In the future, I will create my own course that will only teach people the things you really need in order to get the job. So I started researching programming languages on my own, and I found out that there are actually much easier languages to learn and to start with for the software testing than Java, such as Python or JavaScript. And to give you an example, if you use Java for testing, it is just like to drive a tank to get groceries when you have a bicycle, such as Python or JavaScript. By the way, if you want to try to learn coding for free to get a feeling of it, I will recommend you a couple of resources right below this video, which have helped me a lot to get started with coding. As you can see, I've learned a lot of information during the bootcamp and had to learn quite a, quite a lot on my own, including coding. But this is clearly not something that everyone wants to do. And I just want to make sure that you take it into consideration when you're deciding if this is something you actually want or you don't. But for your information, coding is one of the most wanted skills on the earth right now. And you could even compare it with a superpower. When you type in some code and things just start moving on the screen. Just like Harry Potter, but instead of the magic stick, you have a magic keyboard. It took me about five months of the bootcamp plus a lot of research on my own before I was able to land the job. It actually took much longer for most of my classmates as the amount of time you spend on education and research will almost proportionally equal to how fast you will land the job. Almost. One more time. Almost. During my years of experience working as the QA, as an ASDAT lead, or even as the senior engineering manager, I have found four most important things that you're gonna need in order to become a QA or an ASDAT. First one, personality. People want to work with people. And first of all, they want to enjoy working with you. Second, time to study. I recommend everyone spending at least three to four hours per day but the more, the better. Third, English. Even though I had people spoken very broken English and they were able to learn JavaScript better than their English and they got a job, on average, you need to have a mid-level conversational English in order to get the job as an IT specialist. Experience. I would say this is the most important part of out of all four because behavioral experience-based questions are the casual part of the interview process. And if you do not have experience, you will definitely fail those. But let's stop for a second right here because I want to, I want to make sure that you guys understand that this is something that not everyone wants to go through and changing a career is quite a challenging task that takes a lot of energy and persistence. But if you guys want to do it for free, you can check out this video that explains what exactly you need to learn to become a QA engineer on your own. And finally, for those who want to change their life but cannot afford full-scale bootcamp with the mentors, weekly webinars, and a practical experience working in a US-based startup, I've also prepared something for you. You can find all of the details right below this video. Thank you for watching us and don't forget to give me a big fat thumb up.